вкус, да, а, и там будет а, написано interpretation, а, и можно выбрать а, три языка, а, английский, русский и испанский. А, и от того, как вы нажмете язык а, русский в данном случае, вас а, выведут а, а, в комнату для русскоговорящих. Спасибо. Thank you. Okay. Hola, ¿qué tal? Muy buenas noches. Bienvenidos a todos. Estamos aquí precisamente esta noche de currículum en la Escuela de Oregon City. Si ustedes desean escuchar esta este, conversación en español, de parte de, la par de la parte de abajo de su pantalla van a encontrar un globo terráqueo en el cual ustedes pueden seleccionar para escuchar este, es su idioma preferido. Tenemos disponibilidad de interpretación simultánea en español, ruso e inglés. Así es que pueden ustedes seleccionar cualquier que este eh, idioma que usted elija, que usted escoja y nos van a poner en cuartos para específicamente escuchar todo esto en su idioma predilecto. Gracias. Great. So you can see an interpretation button down below and you can pick Spanish, English or Russian. We'll give a few minutes for people to get into that and let's make sure that our rooms are working. All right, Ruth and Anastasia, are we good? Yes, Ruth, Anastasia, great, thank you. All right, good evening and welcome. My name is Carrie Wilhelm and I am the principal here at Oregon City High School. And I'm excited to welcome the class of 2026. It's hard to believe, but you are here. We hope and our goal for our students is to have a great experience at Oregon City High School. And today, this evening, we are going to give a presentation about some of the classes, some of the programs, and some of the supports. So we will host a main presentation this evening where we'll give information about our school, the requirements for graduation, the different classes we offer, and the programs that we have. We'll also talk a little bit about how to sign your students up for classes, and who the available people are tonight to get some help or answer some questions. After our main presentation, you will have the opportunity to click on some links to join our departments um, and our programs and our counselors to ask some questions and you'll get to speak some, to some of our amazing staff who are here tonight. All right, well, before we get into the nitty gritty of tonight, I wanna share a little bit about what makes Oregon City High School an amazing place. So a few things here, and this is not a comprehensive list, but um, some of the awesome things that we have, we have 27 athletic programs at Oregon City High School and over 30 active clubs. We love having a lot of different clubs to hit the variety of students that come to our school. And it's really easy for students to uh, create new clubs, find an advisor and get some friends to join in. We are one of the high schools, one of the few high schools in the state that has a JROTC program. This is an amazing program that has recently done really well at some competitions and is going to regionals um, next month. We also have over 25 college credit courses. Some of these are offered at Clackamas Community College and others are offered right here at OCHS with some of our teachers who um, have the ability to give dual credit both in high school and college. We have 15 advanced placement courses in a variety of um, different subject areas and one of the most robust elective programs in the state of Oregon. We have an amazing um, fine arts program, an amazing vocal and music program. We have um, business, we have some amazing science electives, amazing social studies electives, um, culinary, uh, construction, just an amazing variety for all different types of students. And so that's part of what makes Oregon City High School so great. Tonight's agenda. Uh, first, we'll do a few introductions so that you know some of the people and know some of the faces. We will then talk about graduation requirements and what it takes to graduate from Oregon City High School. And we'll look at a student schedule. We'll give you some curriculum information talk about electives and college credit opportunities, give a little bit of detail on the process of forecasting, as well as giving some information about our athletics and our activities. 
ways we support our students, and then the opportunity to break out into smaller breakout rooms and ask questions of departments and counselors. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first off, I'd like to introduce a few people who are here tonight on Zoom, and you can see their pictures there as well. We have Associate Principal Mike Stead, and he works with students with last names P through Z. We have Associate Principal Dr. Stacy Erickson, and she works with students with the last name of A through G. We have Associate Principal and Athletic Director Andy Jones. We have Associate Principal Nick Sidlin, who works with students with the last names of H through O. And then our Dean of Students, Jennifer Turner. All of these people are here to support you, uh, your families, and your students. Next up, we have an amazing counseling department and some student support specialists as well. So our counselors, we have um, John Lucente, Brandon Coop, Megan McBride, Teresa Kaufman, Trish Nicholson, Addie Torian, and Brooke Zalewski. And you can see there, they all work with a different alpha. Uh, and those counselors stick with you for your four years of high school with that same alpha so that you get to know them and they get to know you um, and they can support you academically and social emotionally as well. We also have two amazing other staff members who are student supports. And one of those is Dr. Christine Baldwin, and she is our student success coach. She works with students of all levels, but particularly in your ninth grade year. Uh, she is there to support you and creates um, some after school and lunchtime programs to help support students in their academics um, and is all around a, a great support as needed. We also have Erica Frafford, who is our college and career coordinator. And we have one of the best college and career um, spaces around. And um, Ms. Frafford is there to help students um, find career opportunities, to help them with college applications, to help them with scholarships, um, whether students are going to a two-year college, a four-year college, a trade school, or just going straight to career. Uh, Ms. Frafford has a ton of information and is always willing to help students. All right, so what does high school look like? Well, here is what you have to have by the time you finish high school. So in four years, these are the graduation requirements. At Oregon City High School, we require 26 credits in order to graduate. Students should have four credits in English, which would mean that they're taking an English course each year, three credits in math, three credits in science, three credits in social studies. And the social studies credits are broken out into um, one credit of global studies, which is typically taken your freshman year, one credit of US history, and then a half credit of government and a half credit of economics. Also required is one and a half credits of physical education, PE, one credit of health, and then three credits of fine arts, applied arts, CTE, or world language. So that would be classes such as music, um, any of our drawing or painting or sculpture classes, CTE, such as business or culinary, and then world language. Um, and we offer German, French, and Spanish at Oregon City High School. And then we also want you to explore what you love. And so seven and a half credits of any elective. And those electives could be extra classes in any of those um, categories that we already spoke about. So 26 credits in order to graduate. Next up, let's talk a little bit about a schedule. <clears throat> So what you are going to be doing and what you are going to start doing is this forecasting process. And so the forecasting process is extremely important because what happens is after students forecast, that is how we build the master schedule for what the school schedule looks like. So it's really important that you take time to explore the different classes that we offer and forecast for what you want to take because the information that you gives, give us helps us decide which classes we offer, how many teachers teach how many sections, um, and it really defines what our master schedule looks like. <clears throat> and then um, once that's done, 
the students will get their schedule probably in late August, and it will have it will look like this, where it will have three trimesters of courses. Oregon City High School is on a trimester system, which is different than our two middle schools, which are on a semester system. In a trimester system, most courses are two out of three trimesters. There are some courses that are one, and there are some courses that are three. But most year-long courses are two out of the three trimesters. <clears throat> As you can see here in this example schedule, there are six classes each trimester, five regular classes, and then one class that's called mentor teams. Mentor teams is like an advisory class that meets once a week. Um, and these will, this will be a consistent class for your uh, four years in high school. And mentor teams is a class where you will have um, lessons that are college and career based or social emotional learning or school activities um, and program <clears throat> um, information. The other five classes are the classes that you are forecasting for during this forecasting process. If you look, for example, um, trimester one and trimester two, this schedule has integrated math 1A and integrated math 1C during first period. And then in third trimester, it has its second period. That is a three trimester class. Not all classes are three trimesters. So you may have some classes that are first trimester and third trimester, or second and third, or first and second. And so it is a little bit different, but our staff is really great at easing those transitions for our students. Um, and so it's something that our students will get used to. And um, it allows, a trimester system allows for students to have a little bit more electives than they would otherwise. So that is an example of a sample schedule that students would see in late August based on the forecasting of what you guys are going to begin with your process um, this evening. All right, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the curriculum handbook. Um, our curriculum guide, it's 100% online now, and that website is uh, www.ochspioneers.org backslash OCHS backslash forecasting. If you didn't get that, that's okay, because the curriculum guide is also available on our website at the very top of the homepage. Uh, Nick, it appears that your audio has cut out. Yeah, I'm back. Okay. Uh, it muted me for some reason, but that's okay. And uh, coming right back, uh, everything we're going to talk about tonight is actually on the is in the curriculum guide. So if we cover something and you're like, wait a minute, what was that? You can always go back to the curriculum handbook on the website and um, find a ton of answers. Okay, so let's talk about ACC, which is Advanced College Credit and Advanced, uh, advanced Credit Programs. So some of you might know that we offer a ton of opportunities for students to earn college credit while they're still in high school. It's a really big deal, especially when we're talking about how much the cost of college continues to grow and all of that. So we offer advanced college credit classes. We call them ACC classes because advanced college credit. These are college classes taught by our teachers, taught in-house at OCHS. Um, these classes cost about $10 per college credit, and they count towards both a high school diploma and can also be transferred to any Oregon community or state school. That includes schools like Portland State, U of O, OSU, OIT, PCC, and a lot of other state schools. Um, most of them available junior or senior year, but it's important to know about them now um, so you can kind of so you can start planning for them and thinking about them and preparing to uh, to be ready to take them. All right, so here are some examples of ACC classes. Our accounting one class counts for four credits at Business 111. Regular level chemistry counts at five college credits at Chem 104. If your student takes AP Calculus AB, 
they could earn 10 college credits for that class. We have many students graduating with 20, 30, 40, sometimes, though rare, 50 credits. Some students graduate from here and enter college as a sophomore. So when you, again, think about the college, co the cost of going to college, to have a student who can start as a sophomore, you're cutting an entire year's tuition um, off that bill. So um, if you're new to Oregon City School District, or if your child has attended a local charter or private school or an online school, um, or if you're thinking of transferring from another district, there's gonna be a breakout room tonight that you can go into that's gonna talk more about the forecasting process. Cause we're gonna spend a few minutes now kind of looking at forecasting and, and how that's gonna look. Um, and with some of the instructions that I'm about to give, those instructions are going to be specific to students that are currently enrolled in Oregon City School District um, through our middle schools. So please know that we're also here to support you as well. Um, and there will be a breakout space at the end of this where you can go um, that's going to be led by our counseling team um, or by a few members of our counseling team that can help talk through that. Um, so we're going to spend a little bit of time right now talking about our forecasting process. Um, and we uh, we do forecasting now online through student view. So students that are currently at, oh, this should be updated, at Tumwata Middle School or at Gardner Middle School, sorry, old habits die hard. Uh, that is, uh, these instructions are gonna be specific to you. So forecasting is 100% online this year. You forecast online using your student view accounts and that window is now open. Um, we have forecasting worksheets available, and I will be showing you an example of one of those in just a minute, um, but they're also available on our curriculum handbook website. These are a guide. Um, we do not turn these worksheets in. Um, all the forecasting, again, it gets completed through student view. We have an online tutorial video that uh, should be shared from the middle schools, um, but it's also available through our website that talks through how you forecast online. Um, and there's directions there. And again, all of those are directions are available on our forecasting page, which you can easily access through the OCHS homepage on our website. Um, when we're talking about ninth grade, really what we're talking about primarily is the elective courses that we're going to be looking at. Um, so this is the OCHS forecasting sheet for the class of 2026. Um, again, you can use this as a worksheet to fill out information. Um, you'll notice, though, that in ninth grade, the majority of the courses are pre-selected. And I'll talk a little bit about some aspects of that in just a second. But English 9, um, Integrated Math, STEM Physics, Global Studies 9, Fit for Life PE, and Health 1 are all classes that ninth graders coming into OCHS take. Those classes are pre-selected for you in Synergy, or I'm sorry, in well, in Student View, but that, that is Synergy. So with five classes each trimester, three trimesters a year, students are going to take 15 classes. Um, with that, come on, here we go. We do know that for some of our students, some of these preloaded courses are not at the appropriate academic level. And so when we're talking about placement, specifically with regard to math and social studies, um, we're going to be looking at data from standardized tests, middle school courses and grades, teacher input, and students' desire to be challenged. And then we will modify students' forecasting as appropriate. If your student uh, is someone who that you believe should be um, moving into, like for example, our typical math sequence is integrated 1A, 1B, 1C. But if you believe that your student should be in a different math level or in a different social studies level, we recommend that you connect with your student's middle school teacher to let them know. Um, and that can help to initiate that process on our end. When we're talking about class choices, um, really, we want to think about what sounds interesting. Um, so 
we have all of our classes on our curriculum handbook listed out by academic department. They're also indexed. Um, we have an index page that I'll show you in just a moment. Um, the big things that you're gonna wanna look at is what grade levels can take these classes and are there any prerequisites for the course and how many trimesters is the class? Um, we wanna make sure when we're forecasting that we're selecting all sections of a course. So if, for example, in the course title, you see the name of the course followed by the letter A, that means that there is going to be a second part, a part B of that course. And some courses like our music courses, for example, will have a C part as well. So we'll wanna look to see that we have all of those pieces of the course selected when we're making our class choices. If you go to select a course and it does not allow you to select it, then that means that your student does not meet the prerequisite for that course. And if you think that's an error, um, we have the counselor's contact information on here and you can email the counselor if you, if you have questions about that. Um, oh, is, is loading weird? Hold on one second, sorry. Hold on, this is taking in mind of its own. There we go. So our online curriculum guide has a ton of information, um, especially with regard to the elective courses and how to find the right elective for you. Um, you'll wanna look at a page on there called Courses at a Glance, which gives the full list of all the different courses that we offer. And alongside those course names, you can see the grade level that is eligible for those courses. Um, so you'll be able to identify which classes are open to ninth grade students um, and then on up from there. Um, there's also, if you click on those sections and courses, um, there is a more detailed breakdown of the course description and some more information about it that can be useful when making a decision. We're going to try to just go one page forward this time. We'll see if it cooperates or not. Sorry. So. For example, when you're looking at a course um, in more detail, you can then see there's a course description. If there is a fee, um, that would be listed there as well, although all fees should be covered. Um, so all the information that you need for courses is there. Now, something really handy that um, our counseling team has put together that is a great resource for you um, is a quick reference guide to what elective courses are available to ninth grade students. Um, this one pager is on the forecasting website. Um, it also should have been shared out from the middle school programs. Um, and so you can see we have a wide variety of courses that are available for our ninth grade students. And we'll talk more about some of those courses um, in a few minutes. And one second here. I thought I saw um, Andy Jones come in, but I don't see him now. Yeah, Stacey, you can go ahead and take this section. All right. Awesome. So um, one of the an additional ways that our school is well known is through its um, school activities. And our athletic programs are known for success. And some of the sports that we offer are uh, maybe all of the sports we offer are listed here, um, but the OSA governs high school sports in Oregon. They set the rules, and one of those is about eligibility to play sports, and all ninth graders next fall are eligible in the fall. Um, there are rules about how many classes students have to take each term and how many they have to pass and how they must be on track uh, for graduation, but um, when they show up in the fall, everybody's eligible to play. Um, the clubs that we have at Oregon City, like it was on the next to the title slide, we have over 30 active clubs. There's basically like listed here, something for everyone from gaming club to speech and debate. Um, also, if students want to form a club, they can get a staff member to sponsor it. And um, we've got traditional clubs like National Honor Society and DECA, but there are many ways for students to get involved. And in the fall, we have a club fair. And I believe we have an updated club listing on our website, which you could check out. I believe it's under clubs. Um, I might not be truth on that, but um, 
Oh, maybe Mr. Jones is here again. Um, also, whether students are applying for a job or college or scholarship, students who've been involved in school, who participate in activities or the communities, um, oftentimes that um, helps uh, helps the kind of resume or vita of a student as they are progressing onto the next phases. And so we really enjoy giving kids a lot of opportunity and be able to also, if they have an interest, start a club themselves. And then I think before we move forward, just really quick, since he's here, Andy, do you want to just um, introduce yourself to everybody really quick and say hello? I know you're in between meetings right now. Hey, yeah, sorry about that, everyone. Um, Andy Jones, uh, Athletic Director, Associate Principal. Welcome to Oregon City High School and Curriculum Night. Um, I think uh, we covered some of the athletics earlier. We've got over 27 athletic programs. Uh, something for everyone, whether it is swimming, basketball, uh, clay target shooting, bowling, uh, there's an opportunity for somebody to find their niche, as well as all the clubs that we offer. We're up about 32, 33 clubs, uh, botany club, photography club, um, you know, some very great experiences. It's a good way for uh, a lot of our students to be introduced to the high school and to uh, uh, create some new friendships and some new relationships. So uh, um, please make sure that you take a look at all of those clubs that we offer and uh, make sure that your student gets involved. Awesome, thank you, Andy. One of the ways that we um, are helping to support students is through an array of programs that we have to um, in, in different ways. So um, progress the slide. Um, so first of all, for ninth graders, one of the things that we're very excited about is our link crew program, which is um, led by upper Usually it is the first day of school, and it's usually a, a day that's just for ninth graders. And we talk about the, uh, they have activities about success. They can make connections with not only the other ninth graders, but also the older kids and the mentors, which they revisit throughout the year. And there's a school tour. We're hoping last year we had something called Summer Bridge, and we're hoping to be able to offer a longer orientation program for students, but you'll hear more about that um, uh, later in this year, as and you'll hear about that at the middle schools. Um, we also have a ninth grade success coach, Dr. Christine Baldwin. Christine, uh, Dr. Baldwin, we wave. Yay. Um, so she um, she does a lot of different pieces about helping our ninth grade um, program and helping our ninth grade with academic support. And we have um, a, a neat um, ninth grade success team that meets to help support and help continue to um, kind of create a success start for high school. And um, we have, this is our third year with Dr. Baldwin, and um, it's really exciting to see not only the program grow, but then watch our students grow older as they get from ninth grade um, and they keep going on up and, and uh, having a success. We also have um, Erica Froffyard. I think she's here. Um, if she's here, she can wave. Um, she's our college and career um, center um, director. And she does, a, um, contacts colleges, they come in, talk about, really kind of get kids kind of set up to think about their future. And you might think ninth grade is kind of early to be looking, but actually it's kind of fun to start dreaming about schools that you might want to go to. And and we, um, we are really excited to have her full-time and have that college and career center full-time. Also, um, like uh, I think Mike mentioned before, um, student view is really important. Parent view is also important. And if you are currently um, a parent in district, you would have hopefully an active parent view account so that you can help support your student. Um, in high school, it is still important to be able to um, have your students be able to not only check their own attendance in student view, but in parent view to be able to know um, if your kid is, your student is in class and their grade progress and course history. Um, it also helps with students so that they know their schedule. So if you don't have a student view um, for your student or parent view for you, you can get it set up at the middle schools and it will be obviously the thing you do to um, forecast. Um, so that piece, um, we wanna make sure that you know how important that is and how we support your use of it. 
So one of the most exciting parts about an event like this is all of the members of our staff that are here tonight um, to share out about the different academic departments and programs that we have at Oregon City High School. Um, and so we're going to take the next couple of minutes to have them give a brief overview. Um, and then just so you know, the second half of this meeting, we're actually going to split out into a variety of different um, separate spaces that we'll set up here in a few minutes where you can ask more specific questions of these different program leaders. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn it over. Um, to Kathy Varner and to talk a little bit about AVID. Good evening. Hi, I'm Kathy Varner and I am the AVID site coordinator at the high school. And AVID stands for Advancement via Individual Determination. And this program is designed to help students be uh, prepared for college and career after high school. And um, Many students at our middle school already know about this program, but if you're new to Oregon City, uh, we have this program. I'm going to tell you a bit about it. We teach um, study and organizational skills. We teach academic and social skills that may not be targeted in other classes. We provide support for our students with in-class tutors and strong student-teacher relationships. We teach students to work collaboratively and to be successful in most rigorous courses. We provide college and university exposure through hopefully some field trips in the future and with guest speakers who come in and talk to our students. And we help our students with the application process if they're not uh, familiar with how to get to college, what it means to apply and to write letters and all that, that they need. And we help them also explore their interest in careers and, and uh, with guest speakers. And the, lastly, we develop a sense of hope and personal achievement gained through this hard work and determination. So we teach our kids resilience and also self-determination through hard work. So I'll be in, available later for uh, more discussion if you are interested in learning more about AVID. Thank you. I think that's me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shannon Ashby. I'm one of the learning specialists and case managers for students who are participating in an individualized education program um, at our school. And we have um, a spectrum of services that we provide. Uh, we have special programs, which we have the SLC, which is a structured learning center that is focused on academics. Um, and ALPS, um, which is a structured learning center that fo focuses on social emotional. Um, and then the more common, if your student is on an IEP, is the resource, um, an educational resource center. Um, and that kind of general, uh, um, it's a little bit more common if you're on an IEP. And they, we um, advocate and liaison with general education teachers, evaluate, write, and monitor IEPs, and facilitate and organize an annual IEP. We um, also have um, co-taught classes and a lot of different other opportunities um, for support for students who are in that kind of general level of support. And then we also have student skills seminar, which is an elective credit class that students who are on IEP that the IEP team determines that this class is what's best to support their needs. Um, and it's designed to build student skills and support IEP growth. There's also something that's on the slide that is a 504 that you would contact your um, student's counselor by their last name and their alphabet um, to transfer that 504 over if they already have one, or if you are interested in having a new one um, and, or, and you don't even know what a 504 is um, or an IEP is, feel free to contact your counselor um, or anybody at your current school. So. Hi, I'm Melissa Harrison. I am one of the fine arts teachers. We have a total of four teachers. Um, we teach a lot of different courses with an introduction to art being the course that we ask that you take first before you get into our upper, upper level art courses, which include um, art history, the art of animation, sculpture, digital photography, advanced digital photography, graphic design, drawing and painting one and two, and AP studio art. 
Um, once you take introduction to art, you can choose from any of those classes that you want to take, depending on um, if you're going to pursue art as a career, um, if it's a personal interest, or if you just want to develop your portfolio. And um, the other teachers are Nick, Rocky, and Ms. Fariella. Well, hello, I'm uh, Dana Henson. I'm the director of bands at Oregon City. And uh, we have an amazing performing arts department. It is so strong. Um, our award-winning choir, theater, and bands um, offer classes for all incoming students uh, to our school. Uh, our choir has a, an early bird class, as does our jazz band. Um, we meet uh, before school starts, so uh, it won't conflict with schedules. Um, we have uh, honors master choir, advanced treble choir. Um, those are our two audition choirs. And we also offer a concert choir, which is for all students um, that are welcome. There's no audition for that. Our theater classes, um, we're offering, um, of course, our, our intro to theater one. And uh, we're really excited to offer a musical theater class as well. And then there is a tech theater, which is after school. Uh, our bands, we have our uh, audition group, our honors wind ensemble, which is uh, competitive for OSAA. Um, we have our symphonic band, which is open to uh, 9 through 12. And then our concert band is a non-audition. It's kind of our beginning um, intro to high school band. And then, of course, we have our wonderful Scarlet Brigade, which is our marching band. And uh, we play for our football games. We travel um, out of state, hopefully soon. And uh, we're looking forward to planning some of those big trips and looking forward to answering any questions in our breakout room. So thank you again for being here tonight. Hi, my name is uh, Brent Leong. I'm with the uh, Career Technical Education Area in the Business Department. Uh, the Business Department offers courses for all sorts of students, especially at the freshman level. Uh, we offer Computer Keyboarding, Accounting One. Um, we also offer uh, Marketing One and um, other courses there for students to take, especially in Study Skills and Personal Finance. Um, students who are in the CT Business Area can participate in DECA, an association of marketing students, uh, where we compete at the state and international level. Uh, students in the marketing class uh, also get to work in Pete's Place, the student store. Doug Thomas, I'm with the Junior ROTC program up at the high school. Uh, I'm here to talk about the Culinary Arts program, which is an exceptional, uh, Ms. Fukuhara comes from industry and she's done an amazing job with the program. And there's several levels of class from beginning to advanced level that students can go through to master the arts of the culinary. And they have a recent kitchen remodel, which is an outstanding location for learning how to cook at a very high level. So, and she's a wonderful teacher. The design and construction program, again, Mr. Wirtz is, comes to us from industry and has a tremendous amount of experience and patience. And he has a very excellent structured program that teaches students how to use not only the skills that they need to do woodworking and construction projects, but also computer-aided drafting. And at the highest levels, they get to actually manage projects, design, uh, technical drawings, and they also get to uh, construct the pretty high-level projects. So it's a fantastic experience if students are interested in uh, construction and dra drawing as a profession. Our JRTC program uh, is been here at the high school since 1998 and we have a very successful program. It's a citizenship building program that gives kids an opportunity to experience uh, travel and organizational design, organization just similar to the military, but it uh, is under no service obligation for the students, but they get to uh, have that opportunity to meet with friends and travel and build citizenship, which is again, serving the community is one of the biggest things that we do. In parades, we work a lot with the band and, uh, and as part of the Scarlet Brigade is one of our proudest traditions to travel with them and to do activities with them to, and to be out there and put a good show on for the Oregon City and Oregon City High School. Thank you. Let's go ahead and skip that one. It's a kind of a duplicate. So, so in the career technical um, area, uh, this last year we opened up a health services um, component. 
Uh, in the health sciences CT area, we have intro to public health, uh, medical terminology and, and skills, and nutrition. Uh, some of these courses are indeed uh, offered to freshman students. Good evening. Uh, my name is Carrie Crawford, and I'm a language arts teacher. Our language arts department is a, a really large department, and every single teacher in the department is passionate about literature and writing, but we're also very passionate about helping students um, and help having students grow as thinkers and writers and readers. Um, at the beginning grades, grade nine and 10, you're pretty much locked into English nine and English 10, but once you get to junior year and senior year, things just kind of open up and you can take so many awesome courses. Um, we've got two AP courses, AP Lang and Comp and AP Lit and Comp. Um, those are at grade 11 and grade 12. And then we have some really cool writing classes, writing fiction and poetry and creative nonfiction. And then there's some classes to get you ready for college, which is writing the college approach. Um, so regardless of what you take, you guys are gonna find some wonderful classes and some wonderful teachers who will um, shepherd you through. Thanks. Yeah, hi, um, I'm gonna talk just for a second about a health classes that we have at the high school. There are two classes that are required, um, health one and health two at the high school. Most freshmen will end up taking um, health one as a freshman and then health two as a junior. Um, but no, sometimes it doesn't always fit in your schedule and it's not, it doesn't, it's not an exact science. Um, also, uh, this is for a little bit later on, but sometimes it's easier for students to take what we call an early bird health two class. Um, if they're trying to fit it into their schedule, um, if they've got a really tight schedule, that's offered as well for students as they move along to help them get those required credits. Uh, hi, my name is Kendrick Lynch. Um, I'm one of the PE teachers at the high school. Um, all of the freshmen are going to be pretty much locked in for their first PE class to the fit for life class, which is just the basic freshman PE class. Um, once they finish that class, that's the prerequisite for any of the other uh, PE classes that we have, um, whether it be PE activities or weight training. Um, we've got a lot of different opportunities uh, for students to uh, try different types of physical activity, whether it's kind of just the old school uh, sports classes or if they want to lift weights, they can take weight training. Toning and endurance is a little bit more of a uh, an aerobics style class, and we also have uh, yoga and Pilates that's offered. So they've got a lot of different options um, as far as what kind of physical fitness they want to participate in. Um, we also have a zero period, which is which is an early bird um, weight training class, but that's more geared primarily towards um, athletes. Um, kind of football. It doesn't have to be football, but it's it's kind of kind of geared that way. Um, and they have to have uh, a teacher permission. Um, Shane Hedrick is our head football coach, and he is the person that's in charge of that. So if that's something that um, that they're interested in, they would need to contact him uh, prior to uh, signing up for the uh, zero period um, early bird class. And just just as a side note, I don't know if any anybody's aware of this, but we have completely um, remodeled our weight room, and it is probably one of the if it's not the best it's one of the top two or three in the state and it's it's pretty exciting and your kids will be able to kind of be the the first full class that will will be able to take advantage of that so if they get a chance to take a weight training class i highly recommend it we've got a lot more space and a lot more equipment and it's it's a really nice facility now so um yeah that's be Hi, my name is Robert Whiting. I'm one of 13 math teachers here at Oregon City High School. Uh, we, we offer uh, a variety of courses uh, for those that uh, math is kind of their thing. Uh, there's five different courses that we have that they can get advanced college credit for. And, um, uh, uh oh, my light just went off. There we go. Uh, we have five advanced college credit courses that, that students can take, uh, mostly their uh, junior, senior year. Um, I would highly recommend that a conversation be had with uh, the student's eighth grade teacher about whether to take integrated one for three trimesters, uh, but they can also take uh, self-select into an advanced placement two where they, it's a hybrid of integrated one and integrated two. 
And uh, Mrs. Wolf and I are happy to further discuss that uh, at our later breakout sessions. It looks like our science teacher may have dropped off of the call. So I'll take this one for them really quick. Um, so our ninth grade students coming into OCHS uh, take STEM physics as the required ninth grade science course. Um, however, they also have the opportunity to take additional elective courses in science. Um, Earth and space science and marine biology are both courses that are open to ninth grade students and a large number of ninth graders do opt to take those as an elective. Planning forward, um, chemistry is the 10th grade um, science offering. And then uh, biology or AP biology is the typical 11th grade offering. But you can see there's a wide variety of different elective courses um, that can be taken starting really right away in the ninth grade year. Good evening. I'm Eric DeWitz and uh, I'm gonna talk on behalf of the social science department. I have to make a shout out to the whole school. I'm just listening to all of the amazing courses we have in all of our amazing departments. And this comprehensive high school, um, there's something for everybody here. So um, in social science, three credits are required for graduation. And um, if you look at the left side of the slide there, um, our ninth graders uh, would start out with global studies. And then throughout their career, they would have to get a, uh, an, another credit of US history and then a half a credit of economics and government. And one really cool thing about um, our department is um, as a first year, as a ninth grader, we do have an AP offering uh, in lieu of regular global studies. We have AP human geography and we can talk about, if you're interested in that, uh, I'd love to talk to you about that in the breakout session later. And we have several AP options and electives that are just amazing. Um, our teachers, uh, I've worked with them for many, many years, and they, um, they love uh, students and they love their subject matter. So um, we really encourage you to uh, dig in in the social sciences, um, you know, in addition to the three required, um, you know, take one of our uh, classes that, um, you know, interests you. And bonsoir, je m'appelle Monsieur Silva, je suis le professeur de français. Good evening, I'm Michael Silva and I'm the French teacher at the high school. Cornelia? Yeah, guten Tag. Ich, also ich heiße Frau, Frau Signor und ich, ich unterrichte Deutsch an der Oregon City High School. Und uh, guten Tag, ich freue mich auf euch in Deutschunterricht. Hallo. Hey, buenas tardes. Soy Senora Flores. Um, I'm Jocelyn Flores and I'm a Spanish teacher. We offer three different languages. We have French, German, and Spanish. Um, for French and German, you can go from level one up to level four. And in Spanish, we go all the way up to AP. Um, and we also offer advanced Spanish courses if we get enough students taking those courses. We also offer college credits for the third year level of our language courses, fourth year level, and AP levels. So um, if you're looking for college credits, World Language is also a good place to go for that, um, besides just having fun and getting to learn a language. And if you have other questions for us, we will see you in our breakout room. All right. Thank you for all of our teachers and, and staff for being here tonight. And thank you in advance for what you're about to do, um, which is to go into our different breakout spaces. So if you want to go ahead and get those set up now, um, you can go ahead and go for that and step out of this meeting to get those meetings set up. Um, and I will uh, get us going there. So 
Uh, we're going to go ahead now and transition for the last half hour or so of this into um, some help sessions. And so just before we get going in that, um, again, please check our website for more um, support around forecasting. Um, our counselors are a phenomenal resource. Please, they are more than happy to be utilized um, and to help with that. Um, to answer any questions that you have about forecasting if you can't find the answers that you need on our website. Um, for tonight, what we're about to do is I'm gonna share with you um, a, a document that has a whole bunch of different uh, Zoom links. Trying to run breakouts from this room would be absolute chaos. And so um, what we're gonna be doing is having a variety of different sessions available. If you're coming from a district that is outside of Oregon City, um, there is a new students to the district Zoom link, and we recommend that you start there um, to learn about how you access the enrollment paperwork online. Um, and uh, Mr. Coop, one of our counselors, and uh, Vonna Winter, our counseling secretary, will be running that session. Um, should be fairly quick, but can just give you kind of the nuts and bolts of what you need before you go get questions answered from other departments. Um, there will be, uh, like I said, there's going to be Zoom links for each department that you just heard from. And then also our counseling department will be um, doing an open Q&A space um, as well that you can go to if you do have specific questions about forecasting that you'd like to have answered by a counselor. Um, so what I'm going to do now, and I hope that this is going to work correctly if I can get everything to load. Um, is I'm going to share this document into the chat um, of this Zoom so that you can access it there. Um, that should allow you uh, to then be able to go into this document, click on any of those links, and go to the respective sessions. Now, we just had folks leave to go do that. So if the link that you go to isn't working immediately, give it another shot. Um, all of these links should be live and working and you can see they're broken up here um, by each of these different departments. So if you have specific questions, you can get those answered. Um, this uh, Zoom is gonna stay open and um, Mr. Sidlin and Dr. Erickson will hang tight here so that if you have uh, specific needs or questions, um, they should be able to help assist you with that. And um, I'm actually going to hand over hosting power in just a moment to, I don't know, one of you two, you figure it out. Um, but for now, uh, thank you so much for coming to this session. Please go find a breakout room or a breakout session that makes sense for you. Um, and thank you again, have a wonderful night and best of luck in the forecasting process. We cannot wait to see you in the fall.